Hello, welcome to W5. Forget murder, robbery, or assault. The crime most Canadians are likely to be a victim of is a property crime, a break-in, or theft. Seldom in the headlines, and yet one in 25 Canadians is likely to be the victim of a property crime each year. In Vancouver, police there found that most property crime is the work of a few criminals who steal and rob three, four, five times a day. So police decided the best way to bring down the crime rate was by going after these repeat offenders and to lock them up. Here's Victor Malarik with an inside look at a special police squad whose job is to identify, track and keep arresting these career criminals. It's the second they look like they might be up to something. Two of us knocking on the door. Maybe he answers, maybe he doesn't. But these Mom men does. are no criminals. They're members of an elite squad, the Vancouver Police Chronic Offenders Unit. And this morning, they've got a target. He's 23-year-old Adrian Whale, known to police for a long time, and with good reason. Nine convictions since he turned 18. Robbery, break and enter, assault, a one-man crime wave, and that's why the police have him in their sights. He's on probation, but he's broken the conditions. When was he supposed to report? Reported on the 4th and hasn't reported since. He's missed yeah. by two weeks. He's missed two now. So the officers, backed by a police dog, surround Wales' house on a quiet suburban street. The takedown is swift and efficient. No resistance. You're under arrest for failing to comply with your uh, probation order. The Vancouver police have found that keeping people like Whale off the street for even a few days reduces property theft. Okay. Unit Commander Sergeant Matt Clark. We believe that they're going to get back into active crime very quickly, so we try to take the first opportunity to bring them back before the courts. Step on up. That means zero tolerance for breaking the conditions of his probation. And Mr. Whale is just one of many. The Vancouver Police Chronic Offenders Unit currently monitors 430 chronic offenders, averaging 33 convictions each. But of that group, 25% have more than 75 convictions each, stealing millions of dollars in property every year, mostly to support a drug habit. In our city, the offenders are driven by their addiction. James Chu it's, it's is Vancouver's chief of police. They engage in the crime cycle. What you do is you go break into a home, you steal, you take the property, convert the cash, you go to a drug dealer, you buy your drugs, you consume the drugs, and then you repeat the cycle again and again. And for a cocaine addict, the more you get, the more you want. And that's why some of these offenders are committing multiple crimes every day like Terry Bridge, under arrest yet again. You say you do about half a gram a couple times a day? Addicted to crack cocaine and on the chronic offenders list since 2005. No stranger to Detective Warren Pomeroy. How are you feeling today? Just look at his record. 144 convictions since 1973, including assault, break and enter, theft, and possession of stolen property. Today, he was nabbed as he tried to steal some tools from a building site. But he's on probation and supposed to be in rehab. When the judge let you go the last time, what were your conditions? To report to yeah. recovery house? Yeah. That was a problem. He said, here, go. He didn't say, we'll take you there. Yeah. Never showed up for rehab. On the loose for two months. Police estimate he was stealing four or five times a day. This time, they just happened to catch him. It's kind of ludicrous to think that uh, this individual got caught every time he committed a crime. They're pretty adept at what they do. Terry's got a significant uh, criminal history that runs the whole spectrum from violence, drugs, robbery, forgery. It, it, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. At 54 years of age, you would think that a fellow is slowing down. We've got several in their 50s that uh, are quite active. You good? If you're in your 50s, breaking a lifetime of crime and drugs isn't easy. That's why the police have their eyes on Adrian Whale, the young man they arrested this morning. With nine convictions, he's still in the minor leagues of chronic offenders. By taking him off the street, these officers hope to slow his ascent up the ladder of crime. But their work is about to be frustrated. 
The hours pass. Vancouver slips from morning to afternoon, day to night. A city that never sleeps. And now it's 10.45 p.m. at the downtown courthouse. Just over 12 hours since Adrian Whale was arrested. Now, watch this. Here he is, a free man, released on the same conditions he was arrested for breaking earlier in the day. Free to run from our camera. Free to head straight for Vancouver's Lower East Side and the temptations of drugs and crime. Temptations that Detective Tony Sartori knows Whale finds hard to resist. There was an incident that, uh, that happened last year where he was, uh, he was found breaching his uh, conditions again. Uh, he was released and uh, within five hours he was caught uh, breaking into a residence. Every day, a case like Wales shows up on the desks of Sergeant Clark and his team of six officers. Any other chronics arrested overnight? A steady stream of hard work that often ends up in frustration. For sure. We just talked to BET about our friend Clint in there. He's still out and about. Still yeah. out and about? Okay. An offender was arrested on a Friday, um, released in the evening, Friday evening, and rearrested the next day for another offense. And the, uh, the police officer's comment was, in the last 24 hours, I've spent more time with this offender than I have with my family. So I, I think it's fair to say there's frustration. Despite the frustration, the team soldiers on. Hi, it's Tyrell from Chronic Offenders Calling. Created in 2004, their job is to identify and target offenders who commit the most crime and keep them in jail as long as possible. Oh, she's got another one as well. How many? Looks like six. Okay, I'm going to fan this out to you right now. It's low-key, detailed work. No high-speed chases, no guns or gangs, no high-profile murders. This is a different one. The offenders these officers target live by stealing, mundane crimes that rarely hit the headlines. Sometimes when people look at property crime, shoplifting, break and enter, it really isn't taken very seriously by the courts, but is this a serious problem in Vancouver? It's a very serious problem, both in the uh, dollar figure and in the harm it does to people's lives. Um, we've dealt with family business and for 35 years a successful store that's on the verge of shutting down because of repeated break-ins. Um, and an individual people who are victimized by crime, it's, it's a big deal to them. Um, in my experience on the street, a minor crime is, is a crime that happens to someone else. When you're the victim, it's a big deal. A big deal for any victim but terrifying if you're a 90-year-old invalid like Agnes Ulmer. She was in hospital. Her leg had just been amputated, and she was weak and confused from medication. On her hands, three rings, treasured family heirlooms, worth more to Agnes than money. The rings, they meant a lot to you? Oh, well, my mother's ring and my... Diamond engagement ring my husband gave him to me on our 50th wedding anniversary. Then a stranger appeared. A man who said her rings were dirty, unhygienic to wear in hospital, and needed cleaning. He took the rings off your finger. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, what about these other two? That's my diamond engagement ring. And I said, well, they're not dirty. Well, he said, hey, you can have them clean too. Agnes assumed he worked for the hospital and handed them over, still believing she'd get them back. You had no suspicion he was a bad guy? No, I had never. I, coming from a little town like Simpson, Saskatchewan, you trust everyone. Everyone, everyone's your neighbor. And to think that I had to fall for that loon.